hosts the winless Bills in an AFC East battle. Some of you will see it for Eastern here on CBS. It's New York's best start under head coach Herm Edwards. Our Marcus Allen found out how the Jets got ready for takeoff. Week five, marker. Hit me. This is the fastest start you guys have had. You know, you're 3-0 since you've been here with Herman. What do you guys attribute that to? We have went through trying to make it hard on ourselves and getting off to a bad start, and that's not the formula. We've been fortunate enough thus far to get off to a, to a pretty good start. You play three games, you win three games, and, and that's something new for us because generally we're using the credit card. And we're, you know, we're always going, we're, we're using this credit. We ran out of money early in the season, but right now we got money in the bank. The biggest difference is the speed of the guys that we have. And, and the type of players that we have. I think they went out and handpicked the kind of character type people that they wanted in the locker room, that Herm wanted, and just paid huge dividends for us. And um, now we're starting to see the fruit of all that right now. I'm about to bounce back, bounce, to bounce back. What do you think about Curtis? All of a sudden, you know, he's returned to form. I mean, well, he came back with some renewed determination. We spoke about it on the offseason that we needed to get him off to a fast start. And I think his preparation on the offseason, what he did, and then in the preseason, I think, was a key for our football team. How much gas do you think he has left in the tank? He doesn't need gas. He runs on electricity. <laughs> Everything runs on electricity now. He's an electricity guy. So he's doing great. And how important is it to have Chad to start the season again? It's healthy? been huge for us. Two years ago, he came in late in the year, and then last year, he came in late in the year again. And you know, we got all of our parts in place right now. Well, for me personally, it feels good because you take the work that you do in the offseason, you take the preparation that you put in during training camp, and now you get to capitalize on that. You don't have to wait or you don't have to go through an injury and then start all over again. I shut him down, shut him down. One thing I noticed about this defense now is speed. You know, we had to go for some younger backers that can move around the ball a little faster. And uh, we got people that, you know, are young and can move around. In today's game, you need athletic linebackers that can make plays. I think it was a great upgrade in, in, at the linebacker position. 3-0, and fast start. How good can you guys be? Well, we got a great chance to, to do some good things, but we got to realize that, you know, 3-0 and is nothing. The Patriots will be 18 in a row. You know, <laughs> we've only won three in a row. So when you concentrate on the baby steps, that other stuff takes care of itself. And at the end of the day, these players, this organization, we want to win a world championship. I and mean, that's what we're all here to do. Some interesting questions surround this game today. Can the New York Jets continue to fly high? Or maybe does Drew Bledsoe break out against a Jets defense that has looked pretty well, porous I'm at sure, times? I'm sure the Buffalo Bills would love to see Drew. How do you spell night five at the open? Randrian Teffy. Is that one name? Which I am. Uh, can you repeat it? M-O-Y. Can you use it in a sentence? We hold the second annual U.S. Open late night spelling bee just for. <laughs> and you know what? How do you spell Andy Roddick? A C E. How do you spell Leighton Hewitt? Well, it's got a couple L's in it, but there was no L for him on this day. Meanwhile, at night, Serena played. And she wore something. Interesting. Either way you spell it, she'll join us on this program. And she's in a collision course with this lady, Jennifer Capriati. We put a spell on you late night. Alan found out the Colts beg to differ. Offense sales tickets. Defense wins championship. We must do our part. You know why we're here. You know, mm -hmm. questions about the defense. Oh, the yeah. offense is explosive, mm -hmm. but the defense, question mark. We just got to step up, man. Especially with the offense we have, we don't want to be the reason why we don't make it. The reality is we won 12 football games, which is pretty darn good in the NFL, and you have to be good on both sides of the ball to win that many football games. Now we have to do it in the playoffs. Are you guys bothered by the perception? It's all offense there, no defense. I can see how they can say that, especially when the offense is having such a great year. Rose, there's no great Probably more than half of the teams in the NFL put together with this offense will be the weak part of the team. I'm glad we have the offense that we have. A lot of people think we're disappointed that they get all the attention. Peyton Manning, you rock! You've never seen anyone more thankful for Peyton Manning than me. When was the turning point for this defense? Kansas City. Yeah, 
had 45 points put up on you. That's like a kick in the butt. You know, you needed a wake up call after that. We have the jail and do it right now before we hit the panic button. You lose a game like that, and everyone goes into panic mode. Uh, you're trying to start figuring out what the problem is, what's the solution. And Tony just said, look, we're just going to go back to the basics. Just calm down, relax. We're going to be fine. What I told him was, we have the talent and the ability to be a good defense. Right now, we're not playing that way. But if we play the way we're supposed to, we'll be fine. And uh, since then, we have been. This is how we do it. Brady got it! Oh, a great move by Brady. I mean, do you just lick your chops when you see a, a big 300-pounder over I there? I mean, when you see a guy like me, 6'1", 6'2", and, you know, 250, 255, 260, you know, that's something different. It's kind of hard to simulate what we do. Tell me about your philosophy, and, and, and why do you love speed so much? It gives you a chance to create uh, havoc for the opposing offense. It gives you a chance to create turnovers, and that's what wins in this day and age. Yes! You guys are playing with a lot more confidence, a lot more swagger. Is that okay to say? You go out there and play hard every play. You try to, you know, make plays and, and play with energy. And that's what we're going to do. Can the defense play their part? and do enough to catapult the Colts into the next round. If we can go out and win, uh, then they're going to get some accolades because people are going to say, well, they've always had the offense, but now finally the defense is, is caught up. It feels like it's been a million years since Shannon made those comments about the defense. <laughs> are you back? He says it every that? week. Do you feel that way still? Welcome back, everyone, to the NFL today. Just how special is today's Jets Patriots clash? Well, this is the first time in more than three decades that two NFL teams with perfect records of 5 0 or better go head to head, as they will in this afternoon's main event. All right, fight fans, here we go with a battle of the unbeaten. Entering the ring wearing green and white with an impressive record of five wins, no defeats. Introducing the New York Jets. And their opponents wearing red, white, and blue with an unbelievable 20 consecutive victories all coming by way of knockout. The reigning Super Bowl champions, the New England Patriots. With us and the Jets, it doesn't matter what the record is, really. It's a battle. You know, it's going to be one in the fourth quarter, and it's going to be a close game every time we play them. It's a five-star game. you got uh, two division rivals who are undefeated playing each other as undefeated teams. You know, it's been a long, long time since that's happened. We're fighting for first place in the division, so I think everybody's going to be pretty much, you know, geeked up and emotions going to be flying out there. So I think it's going to be a tough 60 minutes for both ball clubs. Shake your body, body. Move your body, body. In this body, body. Don't hurt, no. The pass for me, I know it's going to be tough. Our big thing is just try to contain Brady and try to um, hold Corey Dillon now. Shake your body, body, move your body, body, in this body, body, don't hurt nobody, body. We never can take these guys lightly. I mean, they're coached well. Uh, Pennington is on fire. Curtis Martin is running like the Cur Curtis Martin of old, you know, the, the guy that I used to play with. They know how to win games. They really do. And that's a tribute to their players. The Patriots recover. It is Richard Seymour running to the end zone. Unbelievable. When it's crunch time, when it's tight, they're going to make the play at the end to win it. And, and you have to be able to do that if you're going to win 20 in a row. Everyone's ready to take us down. And we, we know that. We feel that. It's the best team we've played all year. You know, so them being 5-0, and they proved they could win some close games. And um, we got our hands full. Anytime you uh, try to measure yourself as a team, you want to play the best. And uh, right now, New England is the best. The onus isn't on them. The onus is on the team coming in to beat them. And, you know, that's the burden that we bear this week. Running out of fingers and toes. I don't care. I don't care about the streak. I don't care anymore. You know, it's been, it's been talked about and publicized. You know, I want to beat the Jets. I want to beat the Jets, and that's all I want to do. Someone's always got to go. I had to sit and watch Eli Manning grin and bear holding aloft a San Diego Chargers jersey. And then he watched the Giants draft Phillip Rivers and then still watch the big deal of the day go down. All of the while, Ben Roethlisberger knew that any number of experts felt that he had the best skills of any quarterback in yesterday's first round. He spent the week watching this drama play out and then a few heady minutes learning that he will be the new star in town just a four-hour drive from his Ohio hometown. Next, you'll spend that time with Ben Roethlisberger making his first trip to New York and watching the quarterback drama play out. Finally getting to my name, you know, finally was the stress relief. 
But uh, all day today, just waiting because I was still wondering where I was going to be. So I think that was probably the most stressful part of the day. Next, experience the run-up to the draft and the tension that went with it for a first-round quarterback. Meeting GMs and coaches at the Senior Bowl, where as a junior he could not even play, to making the rounds at the Super Bowl to keep his name alive, answering questions about the competition in which he flourished in the Mid-American Conference, showcasing the skills he hoped would lift him to the upper level of the first round. Then came these last few days for Ben Roethlisberger, as Lisa Salters chronicles days of tension, waiting, strategy, and emotion. I feel kind of like a balloon that is just filled with, with air, and on Saturday when my name is called, it'll just kind of, you know, explode and let all the air out, and a big weight will be off my shoulders. Casey, come here. It's Wednesday, three days before the NFL draft. And Ben Roethlisberger is saying goodbye to Findlay, Ohio. We're going to school to see Coach Snodgrass, athletic director, my first basketball coach. You excited? Yeah, I am. Did I tell you Byron Leftwich called me yesterday? No, he did. He I called me yesterday, and we talked uh, for a little while and just said, you know, take a camcorder. He said it's going to be everything and, and more that you ever dreamed. How's it been when you're back in Finley? It's not bad. A lot of looks. A lot of people want to come. A lot of people come to my house. Um, you know, ask for autographs. I think one of the biggest concerns he's voiced with us is uh, not letting people down. There's a lot of people that have been following him in Finley and are cheering for him and want him to do the best. And he feels like, wow, if, I, if I'm not in the top five or six or seven, you know, that I'm, I've let people down and he doesn't want to do that. I've been doing a lot of, having a lot of fun with my friends. Uh, I go over to my one friend Jason Winter's house and you know, we go paintballing. I always run out of paintballs before you because I always shoot like, crazy. shoot like crazy. <laughs> you don't know when you'll be back at all? No, see, that's the thing I want to know. Like, um, I could be back Monday, I could be back never. That's the weird thing about it. I don't know and I wish I knew. Everybody has a draft prediction from, you know, internet websites to neighbors to, you know, analyst guys. Even though people may say that I'm going 11th, 12th, 13th, it doesn't matter to me because I don't even care. Um, if I'm a free agent, I just want to play football. I just want to get on a team and start playing. Thursday morning, Ben leaves his home and heads to the airport. His destination is New York City, the first stop on a journey that will change his life forever. I've never been to New York City before, and I think I'm just excited about going to New York as I am about the draft. But by the time Roethlisberger checks into his New York City hotel, his stress level has already intensified as news continues to develop about projected number one pick, Eli Manning. Eli Manning doesn't want to be a Charger. The Mannings want Eli in New York. They think the Giants are a better fit. Thursday afternoon, Ben gets the latest word from his agent, Lee Steinberg. You and I had talked about and anticipated the fact that Manning would try to get himself somehow to New York. That's not wonderful for us because I think that if things sit where they are right now, um, I think New York will just take you, and that'd be an awesome thing for us. Um, I know all that gives you tremendous comfort because you got your whole life here on the line, and as we're sitting here Thursday night, it's completely uncertain. What did you think when you heard? Were you immediately thinking, what's this mean for me? Well, it was, uh, yeah, we did. I thought about, you know, how could this affect me and how could this affect us, and, but to tell you the truth, Lee, actually said this was going to happen. So I was a little prepared for it about uh, three weeks ago. We knew this was going to happen. I know he just wants to play ball, and uh, I'll just be happy to get him back on the field. I mean, I think he does a lot better on the field than he does in there on the streets doing interviews. What's it been like? Uh, New York City, you're finally here. With this Eli thing, what, what do you think of that over there? There seems to be a bigger crowd over there for another certain quarterback. Every time you hear his name, is yeah. there a part of you that thinks, you guys are forgetting that... Ben Roethlisberger's here, too. <laughs> well, um, you know, a little bit, but, you know, like I've said before, he can have all this time to shine right now because my time to shine is going to come once I get on the field. This is D-Hall TV. D-Hall. And you've been introduced. <laughs> all right, can we get that? Come on, we get D-Hall TV. Yeah, 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 this Eli Manning Number on one overall TV. pick on D-Hall TV. Yeah, right. come on, man. We did a total access. I don't want to go to San Diego, too. Tell him your quote one more time. It's Robert, don't call me Bobby Gallery. <laughs> My quote. Yeah, what's your quote? 
from what? <laughs> oh, yes, me and his boy. I'm glad they're playing. <laughs> San Diego. <laughs> <laughs> if you play for the Jets and I play for the, for the uh, Giants, it'd be on, right? Oh, yeah, it'd be on. You know who will win, though. Yeah, us every time. I remember everything. It was early in the morning, and I know I was on my way to, I was on my way to zoology class. And I came back and I went straight to the weight room and they're like, did you hear what happened? And so we didn't even lift that day. We like stood there and watched TVs in the weight room all day. We didn't even lift. When you're looking at that stuff, what do you think about football? You know, it makes it, makes you feel kind of insignificant. We were talking about, you know, we go out there and, and have fun on Sundays and, you know, we just play a sport. So much to talk about in just in terms of who the Giants do wind up with. Michael, let's say... <laughs> if the Chargers pick Manning, Gallery's gone. You're the fourth pick in the draft. You get to go to New York. All's right in the world. So, we don't go four. My best two guesses after that are Pittsburgh at 11 and Buffalo at 13, and that's if they're both uh, sitting there. It's going to be a roller coaster ride right until the end. So good. <laughs> Thank there you, you. Go. Hey, back. we'll see you. Thanks. We'll, we'll see, I'll see you guys over there. I gotta go, all right? Today, I actually feel better than I have in three months. I think it's because it's finally here. Regardless, even though it hasn't officially happened yet and they haven't called my name. No, I'm back here, me and D'Angelo Hall back here clowning, so we're just taking it easy. It's out of my hands now. It's just, uh, I don't know, just a, such a relief. Like, that balloon has started to deflate now. And it's the big stage, dog. This is what we've been waiting for, though, you know? Backstage at Madison Square Garden, the waiting begins. They put some candies on the table, D. Hall. We're going to be here so long, we're going to go through everyone else's candies. <laughs> Eli, can we get your candies? You're not even going to have time to open the jar. He's not even going to have time to open the jar. With the uh, first choice in the 2004 NFL Draft, the San Diego Chargers select Eli Manning, quarterback, Mississippi. Well, they did what they said they were going to do. If the Oakland Raiders select Robert Gallery. We just got a break there. That was as good as that could be. The Arizona Cardinals select Larry Fitzgerald. At 12.46, the New York Giants were on the clock. All right, guys. Guess what? We're in play. Excitement, tension, waiting to hear that, that first syllable in Ben. Just wondering if they were going to call my name or if they were going to, you know, call... Uh, Phillips name. With the uh, fourth pick in the 2004 NFL Draft, the New York Giants select Philip Rivers. The Cleveland Browns select Kellen Winslow. The Detroit Lions select Roy Williams. The Atlanta Falcons select D'Angelo Hall. As the afternoon wore on, Roethlisberger became the only player left backstage, still waiting for a team to call his name. All day today, just waiting because I was still wondering where I was going to be. So I think that was probably the most stressful part of the day. Can you take that? Hello? Well, and Chris, as you say, the yeah, who's phone calling? rings right here, and then agent we signed Steelers, the Steelers, phone. Steelers. All right. And it happens to be the Steelers. Hello. Yes. How you doing? Good. Hey, coach. Absolutely. What's the deal? It's good. Let's turn it in right now. Yeah! <laughs> and finally, Ben Roethlisberger yeah. heard the announcement he's been dreaming about his entire yeah. life. Uh, with the 11th pick in the 2004 NFL Draft, the Pittsburgh Steelers select Ben Roethlisberger. Thank you very Great much. Great operation out there. Appreciate it. Great place to play football. Where's your home? Ohio someplace? Yes, sir. Friendly Ohio. The waiting was over, but the media merry-go-round was spinning again. You dressed for the part. I did. I, I joked that I knew that this was going to happen. That's why I dressed like this. <laughs> put, put your eye out. Black eye. <laughs> Six hours later, back at his hotel, it was time for friends and family to celebrate. 
we all, uh, with our most love, uh, wish you the best. And uh, we will all be there for you, no matter what comes, the good and the bad, because both will be coming. But uh, we'll be there for you. So, And I thank you all, too. Everybody, thank you so much. Salut. To Ben. Cheers. Ben. Yeah. Yeah. Ben. Good job. Great. <laughs> Quarterbacks framing the drama of the first round. No one knows that position any better than Ron Jaworski, who joins us live. Ron, we saw uh, at the end it was a champagne toast, but in the meantime, uh, his college coach tossed the cell phone there when the Giants went. We saw a vivid illustration, I think, of the human toll that the Eli Manning dominoes began to uh, cause to topple. Yeah, no question, Bob. The draft is a process, and you really never know how it's going to work out. And every player in this draft has blemishes. They have flaws. They have problems. You just hope you don't have too many. But no matter what happened yesterday, and we saw the champagne glasses being uh, lifted and toasted, we saw the drama of the day. Right now, this morning, that is irrelevant. Every player, particularly the quarterbacks, in my opinion, that were drafted yesterday, forget about it. Get your contract taken care of. Get in and start learning the system because the only thing that matters now is what you do from this day on with the team that you are with. One other thing does matter. It's called dead presidents. How expensive was the drop from 4 to 11? Well, there's no question. Uh, when you fall out of the top five, there's a significant loss in, in, in monetary value. Uh, but clearly, as I look at Ben uh, Roethlisberger, the situation he falls into, in Pittsburgh is absolutely perfect for him. You got a Tommy Maddox as your starting quarterback. You can learn from a guy that has played in this league for a while, understands the game. And Roethlisberger, who's only been a four-year quarterback, yes, tremendous upside, tremendous talent, but still doesn't have kind of the pedigree of a guy that played quarterback in high school or Pop Warner. He's still learning the game, so he's going to go to a good situation in Pittsburgh and play behind Tommy Maddox. What are the qualities that he has that the other three first-round quarterbacks may lack, and what does he need that that they may have. You know, as I studied Ben, the one thing that was really evident was his ability to see the field. Great vision, always focusing, focusing down the football field, not giving the secondary or linebackers any indication of where he's going to throw the football. Big and strong in the pocket. And usually when you talk about big, strong guys, they're usually guys that take a pounding. Ben is not that kind of quarterback. As I studied him, he took very few hard hits, those straight on hits. So I think he will have a long career in the National Football League by not getting injured. But he's a guy that you can move outside. He can throw well on the run to his right as well as his left. He has a good touch on the deep ball. And he understands protection. And, and I think when you project guys to the NFL, the one thing you must understand is you have to play the cerebral game. You must be smart as an NFL quarterback. God-given talent won't always get it done. And I think when you look at a Rostisberg, you see a guy that understands his protections and he can read coverage. Why is this position the toughest to get a gauge on? You talked about breaking down tapes. Some organizations had been number one on their chart, on their board. Why is this position the most bedeviling? Well, you know, quite honestly, as, as I go to games every week and cover games, as I go to training camp, as I go to practice, the one thing I see are systems that quarterbacks do not project well into or fit well into. You've got to get a quarterback in a situation that sets him up for success. Some quarterbacks don't have strong arms, but they're accurate throwers and they get in a vertical style of offense, it diminishes their chances to succeed. So I think where it's hard to evaluate, you just look at a particular talent of a player, but you must put that particular talent in a position where he can succeed, as well as surround him with a good offensive line.